death penalty enthusiast. With President Peter again making a push in his state of the nation address for the reinstatement of the death penalty, beautiful noises are being heard from his flat in Congress. The Senate looms as the battleground. The House of Representatives having earlier approved on third and final reading House Bill No. 4727, which seeks to impose capital punishment on drug convicts. Certain new senators, apart from the President's longtime allies in the chamber such as Manny, Pacquiao, are expectedly taking an up stance in relation to his fresh push. I mean Marcos, for example, now expresses openness to capital punishment after having worked for its abolition way back when she was a member of the House. But she displays a serious squeamishness at what she considers brutal methods like Hamming Dioko, who was so grand looted mainly none of those alluded of torture, killings and disappearances were not hallmarks of her father's long martial rule, and as so state murder were not in fact an act of high brutality no matter what method is employed. On the other hand, Beto should have been smell a rose to be bothered by seeming nice six, briefly proposing what he thinks drug dealers should have coming, the parents will add a non-firing squad mad in Salunidas. Seen in that income mass of cost sealum to do, Beto saw three. Senate President Tito Sato predicts heavy debates on the issue, including whether plunderers should be done in as well. But Senator Grace Ho notes the chamber's current configuration the numbers, certainly, not the level of brilliance and concedes that approval of a measure reinstating the death penalty just might make it. And thus would the Philippines move closer to regressing among the ranks of countries that impose capital punishment and state policy. Meanwhile, the president mouth piece, Salvador Painlo, says his principal would prefer using roads to cut costs. Painlow's statement should not be construed as just another of the president's macabre twists no matter the macabre content and delivery. Shortly after his election in May 2016, after all, Mr. Duder denounced his desire to reimpose the death penalty and his plan to have Congress approve it soonest. I needed to combat drugs and to deter it, he was reported as saying. What I will do is urge Congress to restore the death penalty by hanging. Deterrence is the operative word among those bashing the reimposition of capital punishment, such as Justice Secretary Menardo Rivera, who cites ordinary human behavior as his yardstick in measuring its supposed efficacy. Yes, the findings of scientists and researchers cannot be overstated, that deterrence is a myth that serves to devalue human life and sends the wrong message that killing in certain circumstances is permissible, that criminals are mainly concerned about whether they will be caught not about what might happen to them after arrest. And under the Philippines criminal justice system that remains beset by corruption, incompetence, inefficiency, lack of judges and prosecutors, huge case backlogs and steep legal fees, it is primarily the impoverished that are sentenced to die. Zero in the early 2000s seconds, according to Alvarez. Echo Lasman, 73.1% of convicts on death round belong to the lowest and lower income classes. The convicted rate is Leo Echegare, who died by lethal injection in 1999 the first in the Philippines to be thus executed with in the slum. His execution caused a stir in the Supreme Court, which, during the period of 1993 to 2004, affirmed the death penalty in only 230 of 907 cases submitted to it by regional trial courts for review. More than half were downgraded to life imprisonment and 65 to acquittal. Steve Radal Hussein, then the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, made it abundantly clear, no judiciary, anywhere in the world, is so robust that it can guarantee that innocent life will not be taken, and there is an alarming body of evidence to indicate that even well-functioning legal systems have sentenced to death men and women who were subsequently proven innocent. But the President's unrelenting push for the death penalty and his lieutenant's unequivocal support for it should hardly be a surprise. The war on drugs, his administration's brutal, and Turkey's program, shows no sign of slapping even in the face of local and international censure. The number of those slain in suspicious circumstances continues to climb. If capital punishment is reinstated, viewing it as but a formal extension of the killings would not be such a stretch. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.